this video, we're going to begin looking at some of the hand gestures and symbols developed by Butch Morris for his system of conduction. Now, if you're not sure what conduction is, essentially it's a group improvisation between a conductor and a group of musicians, where the conductor provides information about how to play using his hands or the baton, while the musicians actually play and provide the musical information. Together, they kind of feed off of each other and create this instant musical experience. That's actually pretty unique. The first gestures that we're going to be going over and learning are directive activations and endings. What this means is how do you tell the musicians to start playing and then how do you get them to stop. The first one we're going to do here is how you inform the musicians that they're about to play something. So similar to when you're conducting in regular time, 4-4 four, four time in this sake, the last beat, beat 4, your baton raises up and this tells the musicians that it's going to be coming down onto beat 1 very soon. So because this is improvised music, usually we won't have a set time signature. Sometimes we will, but usually not. So we're just going to take this last beat, beat four, to tell the musicians that a downbeat is going to be coming. So it would look something like this in practice. So let's say we've just given a hand signal to the musicians, we've shown them all what it is, we know that they have seen it, we raise our baton, and then they all prepare to play. What follows is pretty obvious at this point. After the upbeat, comes the downbeat, and that tells the musicians to begin. So those two sequences together, say we have a hand gesture, up, down, again. And what I like to do is give a little breath. That often will signal to musicians when to begin playing. Along with the baton, they see the inhale, especially if they play a wind instrument, and the exhale is the beginning of their note. So one more time, upbeat, and downbeat. Now, the downbeat doesn't really matter where you land as long as you're consistent with where you do it. If you end your downbeat here one time and then end your downbeat down here another time, musicians are never going to know exactly when to start playing. So just be consistent with where you end. I like to end mine somewhere around the waist. So we've got the musicians playing now. What if we want them to stop? Now, there are a few ways to do this depending on how many musicians we actually want to stop with our hand signal. If we just want to stop one musician, we can simply do a little roll of the baton or a little wave of the hand kind of going over their person and kind of pushing them out of the way and they'll take that to mean stop playing. So what that would look like if they're playing, downbeat has just happened, want that person to stop, over in the back, way in the corner, cut them off. Just a little cut off. Now if you want a larger group or even the whole ensemble to stop playing, what you'd have to do is called an all stop in which you cross your hands in front of your face and kind of pull them apart, which signals everyone to stop. Without the baton, you can do this as well. It's just kind of a grab and pull out, kind of like you're tying a bow. With the baton, you just have to make sure you don't poke yourself, cut across, and the quicker you do it, the quicker they all stop for a dramatic ending, or you can do it slow to get a nice kind of gentle ending. So your body language also conveys how they're going to do it. So just be aware of how you're presenting yourself when you're doing these gestures. In the next video, we're going to go over some basic gestures that will signal the musicians to actually play some notes for us. So I'll see you then.